I speak to you in the name of God, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My teacher, let me see again. My teacher, let me see again. Words from the man who encountered Jesus in today's Gospel reading, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. And for the past few Sundays in Mark's Gospel, Jesus has been on his way to Jerusalem with a purpose. And that purpose was toward the cross and toward his death. And we are told that when Jesus was leaving Jericho, he encounters a man who received a double whammy of misfortune or adversity in his life. He was physically blind and he begged from others. And when he learned that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout for Jesus. And we are not told what caused Bartimaeus to be blind. However, it appears he was not born blind like the man in John's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 12, who was blind from birth. And thus it is safe to say that Bartimaeus remembers what it is like to see. He knows what he's been missing. But a man like Bartimaeus would have been ignored or snubbed by the society. One's disability in those days was a sign or was seen as a sign of God's judgment either on them or on their parents. And as a result, they were considered an outsider or an outcast. So Bartimaeus may have remembered when he was a somebody before he became blind, and now he was considered a nobody, a blind beggar who sat beside the street and nothing more. And yet, although he could not see Jesus physically, he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, he shouted. And he doesn't say it once, he says it twice. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus, the one who cannot see, cries out to be seen. For he recognized who Jesus was, even though he may, have, he may not have ever seen him physically. Bartimaeus was not physically able to see, but inwardly and spiritually he was able to see because of his faith in recognizing who Jesus is and what Jesus could do. And he knows that Jesus has the authority and the power to heal. And healing is what Bartimaeus wants. He doesn't want a handout from Jesus, neither does he want pity. He wishes mercy. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And that's all he asks for until Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And remember, in last Sunday's Gospel reading, Jesus asked James and John that very same question. And James and John, they wanted glory. The man with the many possessions a couple of Sundays before that wanted eternal life. But Bartimaeus, he kept it simple. He wanted mercy. He wanted the ability to see again. And with his profound faith, he was healed. And isn't it ironic that as Jesus traveled to Jerusalem, he encountered people who were, or who could physically see, but were spiritually blind. Their spiritual lives seemed to be more covered with darkness than with light. And you may ask me, what is spiritual blindness? And spiritual blindness does not mean you cannot physically see. It is being unable to see how the Spirit works in our lives, your life and my life, and in our experiences. 
spiritual blindness is being unable to see the things of the Spirit. The kind of blindness that prevents us from seeing what is truly important in our lives. And some may say that it means that you do not believe, that it means that you do not believe in God. But that is not necessarily true. For the Pharisees believed in God, and yet Jesus often scolded them for their spiritual blindness. As he would with these folks with whom he traveled or met on the way to Jerusalem. Remember Peter, who correctly declared Jesus to be the Christ, the Messiah? But as soon as Jesus told him of his suffering and death, Peter rebuked Jesus, saying, That will not happen to you. And Peter cannot see that was the path that God had chosen for the Messiah to take. And Peter wasn't physically blind, but he was spiritually blind at that moment. Or what about the man with the many possessions who asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he had obeyed all the commandments since he was a youth, but realized something was still missing from his life. And he wanted to inherit eternal life. He truly wanted that, but just could not see a clear path as to how he could do that without having to sell his possessions and give his money to the poor. Again, another individual who wasn't physically blind, but at that moment, he was spiritually blind. Or what about the Zebedee boys, James and John, in last Sunday's Gospel reading, who had the favor of Jesus, their desire to sit on the right and left side of Jesus in his glory? And this wasn't popular with the other disciples, but it led to Jesus teaching his disciples a lesson in greatness versus, versus servanthood. They were unable to see that whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. They were not physically blind, but they were spiritually blind at that moment. And the irony here is, is that Bartimaeus, the blind man, sees what Peter couldn't see, what the young man with the many possessions couldn't see, what James and John, two of Jesus' disciples, couldn't see. Bartimaeus knew that his life was going nowhere. It would remain the same had he not encountered our Lord. He knew that his only purpose, at least at, to this point, was to sit by the roadside in darkness and to beg in the midst of his physical blindness. But even though we would never like to be physically blind, like Bartimaeus, we have to ask ourselves, are we not sometimes spiritually blind? Are we not? Doesn't it appear sometimes that we may not be blind physically, but we are blind spiritually? So we have this struggle, this wrestling match going on within us, the battle of physical blindness versus spiritual blindness. And it goes back to what Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 8 and verse 18. Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? In other words, we have eyes and yet we do not see. We do not truly see. We do not understand. We do not realize. And don't we have many moments when, although we can see physically, we are blind spiritually? Don't we have times when although we can see light externally around us, our lives are filled with darkness? Don't we have times when we get it and sometimes when we don't? Don't we have times in our lives when we bear hatred and malice in our hearts, where there's anger and resentment and jealousy and mistrust? Are there not times when we experience disappointments and failure, when we are unsure as to who we are and who we are not? Are there not occasions that we turn a blind eye to people and circumstances God has placed in our lives for our good, but because they're not who or what we desire, we lose out on what could have been a wonderful experience 
or relationship in our lives? Are there not times when we do not wish to see because we are afraid of what the outcome may be? In other words, we turn a blind eye and choose not to see. Bless you. And these are the kinds of spiritual blindness we encounter in our lives. But God wishes us to move from spiritual blindness to spiritual sight. And if there's any doubt of that, He calls us and He invites us to come to Him. And it doesn't matter who we are. Jesus has no favorites. It doesn't matter who we are. Bartimaeus would have been considered an outsider, and yet Jesus calls him. Because with Jesus, there are no outsiders. And when people are trying to silence him, to prevent him from shouting for Jesus, Jesus calls him, tells them to call him here. And as a bar to me, stands before Jesus, our Lord asks him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And that is not a, just a question for Bartimaeus. It is a question for you and for me. It is a question for every individual who is experiencing darkness in his or her life. It is a question for the woman who is awaiting a kidney transplant and none seems forthcoming at this time. It is a question for the man who cannot find a job and is wondering when and or how will he be able to support his family. It is a question for the person who is experiencing anger and resentment and is begging to be rid of such anger. It is a question for a couple who is going through a divorce and wonder what the future holds. It is a question for the individual who is hoping for love and affection and a relationship with another. But that seems to be a rare commodity these days. It is a question for a child who has lost her way and cannot seem to get back on track. It is a question for anyone who is experiencing spiritual blindness and needs spiritual light as a result of what is taking place in his or her life. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus says to you, and he says it to me, and he says it to all persons. It is a question Jesus asks us over and over again and again because each day we have different challenges and we have different answers. But he asks us the same question. What do you want me to do for you? And when he asks us the question, we come to him in faith. We come to him as Bartimaeus did, for he had such a strong faith that he threw back or he threw away his cloak, knowing full well that he wouldn't need it anymore, that Jesus would heal him. And so, my friends, regaining spiritual sight, moving from spiritual blindness to spiritual sight, from spiritual darkness to spiritual light, takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It is something we are constantly working at and hopefully getting better at. It starts and continues with our spending time with God in worship. Spending time with God in His Word. Spending time with God in prayer. It happens in the strengthening of our faith. And it takes place when we build a strong relationship with God in Christ. We do not achieve spiritual sight in our own strength. Like Bartimaeus, we need Christ to help us move from spiritual darkness to spiritual light. The same way Jesus does restore Bartimaeus to a place of wholeness and belonging to the community again, He can restore us, each one of us, to wholeness as well. So I leave you with this question. If Jesus was to say, was to call you and ask you today, what 
do you want me to do for you? What would you say to him? What would you say to him if Jesus asked you, what do you want me to do for you? What are the things taking place in your life, in my life, that we would wish Jesus to restore? Amen.